we need to return to the questions posed earlier. What role does the atmosphere have in warming the Earth's surface? What is it about the atmosphere that explains this role? What is the underlying process? And who discovered this underlying process? The Irish physicist John Tyndall is commonly credited with explaining the greenhouse effect, which underpins the science of climate change. Starting in 1859, Tyndall published a series of studies on the way a number of gases, including carbon dioxide, absorbed radiation. This was an area of investigation that, in his words, was a perfectly unexplored field of inquiry. To measure the absorption of radiation by various gases, he had to build his own equipment, in particular the ratio spectrophotometer. With this instrument, he quickly realised the importance of water vapour in the absorption of terrestrial radiation. In 1861, Tyndall wrote, Remove for a single summer night the aqueous vapour from the air which overspreads this country, and you would assuredly destroy every plant capable of being destroyed by freezing temperature. The warmth of our fields and gardens would pour itself unrequited into space, and the sun would rise upon an island held fast in the iron grip of frost. The importance of other gaseous species and the relative effectiveness of each in absorbing infrared radiation was reported in a paper published in 1862. Following very careful measurements, Tyndall determined that carbon dioxide is 90 times more effective at absorbing infrared radiation than air. He determined methane as being 403 times more effective. He later determined water vapour to be some 16,000 times more effective at absorbing infrared radiation than pure air. The implications were clear. In 1862, Tyndall wrote, As a dam built across a river causes a local deepening of the stream, so our atmosphere, thrown as a barrier across the terrestrial rays, produces a local heightening of the temperature of the Earth's surface. This describes the key to climate change. Tyndall had discovered in his laboratory that certain gases, including water vapour and carbon dioxide, are opaque to radiant heat. He understood that such gases high in the atmosphere help keep our planet warm by interfering with escaping radiation. But should Tyndall be given priority in this discovery? An 1856 presentation delivered before the American Association on behalf of the American scientist Eunice Foote describes experiments in which she filled glass jars with water vapour, carbon dioxide and air, and comparing how much they heated up in the sun. She wrote, The highest effect of the sun's rays I have found to be in carbonic acid gas. Carbonic acid gas was a contemporary term for carbon dioxide. She further wrote, The receiver containing the gas became itself much heated, very sensibly more so than the others, and on being removed, it was many times as long in cooling. However, it is the discussion that followed that warrants attention. Foote speculated that the concentrations of carbon dioxide in the air could influence global temperatures an atmosphere of that gas would give to our Earth a high temperature. And if, as some suppose, at one period of its history the air had mixed with it a larger proportion than at present, an increased temperature from its own action, as well as from increased weight, must have necessarily resulted. Eunice Foote identified carbon dioxide as a greenhouse gas a few years before Tyndall and also noted its importance in controlling the Earth's surface temperature. Foote's contribution to the science of climate change needs to be more widely acknowledged, given how marginalised female scientists are in the history of science. So with the work of Eunice Foote and John Tyndall, we now have the underlying process that explains the greenhouse effect. The greenhouse effect is due to the absorption of terrestrial infrared radiation by gases in the atmosphere, primarily water vapour and carbon dioxide. Thanks for listening.